guys, it's April. About a month ago, I put out a video just gushing about how awesome you are because for some reason, all of a sudden, I got an influx of followers and that made me really super excited. As a gift from me to you, I decided that I was gonna do this Q&A slightly shout out video so that I could just let you know how much I heart all of your faces and if you wanted to know a little bit more about me or if you had a recommendation for what kind of video I should do next, I gave you the opportunity. And so this is the result of that video. I got a lot of questions, which is really exciting, so I'm gonna try and answer them all here right now. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to read off these questions because some of the questions were very long and complicated and there was no way I was gonna be able to make it look like I just teleprompted <laughs> these questions, which I love, but you guys get to see my beautiful phone, so. There's that. Okay, starting from the very top and going down the page. Shayla at Shay Geeks Out wants to know which retelling we should read next. Me and Shay have been buddy reading once or twice a month for several months now, and we both know that we both love fairy tale retellings. So, Shayla, are you ready for this? Because things are about to get crazy. How about this one? For this one? Maybe this one? Possibly this one. I'm excited about this one. Also got this one. This one right here. Huh? 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 We got this one. This one. This one's really, really pretty looking. Mm -hmm. This one. It's bold. And this one. I have more, but I figured I probably shouldn't overwhelm you. Those were the immediate ones that I thought about and pulled off my shelf. So, you choose. I made a list. You're welcome. French Toast and Books ask if I have read a series called A Fairy Tale Retold by Regina Domain. I have actually never heard of that before. I then looked it up after you asked that question and it looks fairly interesting. So if you do pick that up, let me know what you think because I might pick that one up too. Steve over at the Law Gnome. Of course, that's to get deep and profound on me, like always. Thanks, Steve. Based on my current book knowledge, if I could go back in time to grade school to write a book report, which book would I choose and why? I would probably choose Fahrenheit 451 because even though I didn't know how much of a sci-fi geek I am, just by reading this, I would kickstart all of that because this book, I really, 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 really like this book. I don't know what it is. It's that classic dystopic unsettlement and it's got books involved. There's something just that draws me in about this book and I didn't know that for the longest time because I'm like, eh, it's a classic. I don't even read it. But I did and it's good. I should have done it sooner. And then number two from Mr. Steve. If the day ever arrived that you decided to stop making YouTube videos, what is the main thing I would like my viewers to remember me by? I would just like to be remembered for being a little bit crazy and a little bit bubbly and a little bit out there and just all around welcoming, I guess. That and my love of books, which I think I've already succeeded in doing just by having this channel. But yeah, I would basically like to be remembered for just putting it all out there. That makes sense. Maybe my naked cats? Just throw that one in there for fun. Mackie reads, what book am I most excited to read based only on the cover and what book am I most excited for from the synopsis? For the cover alone, I am really excited to read A Tyranny of Petticoats. I, there's, there's something just classic yet modern about this cover and it's just pretty and I love it and I really don't know what most of the stories are inside of this. So this was a cover and author by. And then as for the synopsis, I cheated a little bit on this one because I thought of the answer when you first asked the question, but now I have since read the book. Whoopsie. But that is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. The premise of a best friendship and then an exorcism thrown in just really called to me because I like horror and there's not enough female friendship in the world. And if you haven't read this book and you like horror, go read it. Don't Stop Reading ask, 
What has been a very influential book in my life? That would be A Brave New World by uh, Aldous Hux Hux Huxley. I always get the author wrong. When I first read this book, it probably was one of those books that fully dragged me into sci-fi, but it was also one of those books that had this really like weird aspect that has always stuck with me. <laughs> and that was mainly this premise of genetically modifying humans so they fit a certain role in life, that has always just ticked through my brain repeatedly and has been a premise for a lot of my thoughts on science and all of that. So that would be this one. Don't Stop Reading also asked what my favorite color was. Pink. Why is my favorite character the best? I think I did a whole video on this. In Wool, there is a character named Juliet. She is absolutely amazing and very strong-willed, and I will link to that video in which I gush out of all the reasons of why you should vote for Juliet, but it stands to reason they're also the reasons why you should really like the character of Juliet, and it is a very long video, so if I went into it here, you might get a little bored. So I will link above my head and down below. What is the first book I remember reading? That would probably be the Pony Pal series. I don't know if anybody else on the planet remembers those books, but when I was little I was on a very big horse kick and those books are a lot. There are a lot of them that was Englishing. And I really enjoyed them and may have read them all, even though they were kind of formulaic. I like them. And that was the last question. Thank you for asking all those. That was fun. Okay. Denise Marie asked if there are any books that I regret buying. There are, um, a lot of them. I usually end up just donating back to the library or something and then forget they even existed or that I ever bought them. But one that sticks out in my mind just because of the idiotic nature in which I purchased this book, that would be The Elixir by Hilary Duff. I am a huge Lizzie McGuire fan. I am also a very huge ghost fan. And so when I saw Hilary Duff had written a book and it conglommed a little bit of that supernatural ghost with photography, which I also love. Those three things right there completely sold me. I did no research over the book, which I usually don't with books, but I do regret picking that up because it was just bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's one of those books that is sitting upstairs in my craft room right now and may be turned into some kind of project in which it just the look of the pages matter, not the actual content. So there is that. I'm trying to think of other books off the top of my head, but that is the main one in the recent years. Clara asked if I ever aspire to publish a book someday. The answer to that question is no. <laughs> you guys don't want me to publish a book. I am very bad at sentence structure and grammar and all of that nonsense that it takes to make a good book which is why I'm not very critical about that when I read. It's because I don't notice things like that. I mean, I guess I could tell a good story if someone else were to actually write it for me, but me alone writing a book, uh, yeah, you probably don't want that. The, the, the world probably doesn't want that. I do have some very old fan fiction and personal writings up that I guess I can link to so you can see how horrendously bad I am. Just be warned that these are all from 10 years ago or... Hi! Hi! Yeah! <laughs> I love you too! Guys, this is Cassie. She's staying with me for a little while. Okay, bye. Um, they're from 10 years or longer ago, so they're from my high school days. Be gentle. <laughs> Maggie Ann Martin would like to know if I could survive with only one book to read for the rest of my life. I could not survive with just one book to read. I would probably go a little stir-crazy, but if I was forced to, 
pick just one book. There is a book that I go to nearly every year. I didn't last year because I was overwhelmed with starting booktube and I had so many books that I wanted to read. So I didn't read it last year but I normally read it yearly and that would be Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morlier. I really love this book and so if I was forced to choose just one book it would probably be this one. Beyond Opinions would like to know if I script my videos or if I just wing it. As you can tell by the nature of some of the things that are happening in this video, I just wing it. It's a thing. It happens. I don't do well scripted. I sound scripted when I do script things. You kind of notice that in my uh, Reading with Cats video and some of my earlier videos where I write out a lot of the things that I want to say. So I've learned that I just just go with it. Don't overthink it. And then if I do ramble, I can just edit it out. Boom! Magic! Technology! So yeah, <laughs> I don't script. Pickle Hearts Books just gave me a rapid fire one or the other choice. So here we go. You guys ready? Pancakes or waffle? Waffles, because they have little holes where you can fill up with. And I like to put a lot of powdered sugar in those. Night or day? Day, I like sleeping at night. I don't like doing much of else in the night because I'm old and I'm mean and I'm an early riser. So, day. I like doing things in the day, but I like being scared at night. Eh. Beer or liquor? I come from a very big beer family. We do a lot of craft beer tasting and all of that kind of stuff. Liquor me, we don't get along very well. So, beer. Plane or train? I have never traveled a long distance on a train. That would be fun. I do like riding in planes. Just because the thought of being that high up in the air is really exciting to me and you can get more places by plane, especially overseas, so plane. What is my favorite breakfast food? My favorite breakfast food is probably... Ooh, it's probably eggs in a basket. I don't know if you guys know what that is. You know, you cut out a little hole in the bread and then you put it on the fryer and you start crisping up the bread and then you break the egg in the bread and it's a little egg inside of the bread. I don't know why I get really excited about that, but yeah, that. I really like eggs in a basket. And then what is my all-time favorite book? I'm gonna go back to this one because just by the fact that it is the main book that I keep coming back to, this is probably my all-time favorite book. The Reading Puppet was amazed that right now I am sitting in my basement. It's true. All of these bookshelves are sitting in my basement. Everyone teases me that if it wasn't in the basement, they'd probably all fall through the floor. Because right now I am sitting in a room of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bookshelves. And they are mostly full. I've got two over there that aren't full but they're starting to fill up, which is exciting. So yes, I am in my basement where it is cool in the summer and can get nice and warm when I bring the space heater down in the winter. But otherwise, yeah, I am in my basement. I'm a creeper in my basement. You're welcome. Robert Kalukla would like some tips on getting started making videos on booktube. Just do it. That is the biggest tip I can give. It is really awkward sitting in front of a camera for the first time and it can get weird when other people are in the room with you. So plan your first time when nobody else is in the house and plan on doing a lot of takes and just start with a dialogue. I usually start a lot of my videos by just randomly talking and I find that that helps me find a rhythm and completely forget that I am doing this to no one in thin air. But also, as long as it's something you're extremely passionate about and it doesn't feel like a chore, do it. If it ever becomes something that just drains you, walk away for a little while. But if you're very invigorated about doing it, do it. And you don't need anything special, you don't need anything high def, high tech, high fidelity. I'm just thinking of words with high in them. Simple phone and a uh, well lit window can be the best. And uh, you said something about food in your comment. I think that is absolutely amazing because besides books, food is one of my favorite things on the planet. I could eat food a lot. I do eat food a lot. I like food. So I think your idea of starting a channel is absolutely brilliant and you need to do it. And then let me know when you do it because food and books. Done. So.
Sold. KCH would like to know how many books I currently own. I'm going to go to Goodreads for this one because I don't keep a mental track in my brain. This is why I have Goodreads, so I can catalog all my books. Well, Goodreads says I have 1,033. I know I have at least four more on the way. So 1,037 books at present. And this is including both my physical books and my ebooks. So yeah. That, that, that's, that's one of my books. A girl in a book would like to know what my favorite book of all time is. Like I said, Daughter of the Forest. If you guys haven't read this book yet, you need to read this book. Do it. Dang it. <laughs> Any unpopular opinions? I'm starting to realize that my kind of okay review over Unhooked may be a little against the grain. I've had several people make comments on my wrap up that they've heard not some good things about this book and so they've been paranoid about reading it. I went into this book completely blind. I did enjoy it. I can see where some people would have problems with it but they didn't really scream at me so I did give this a higher review. So there's that. And then I did in the past read a Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas and it did not end well for me. I got hung up on some things and I just, I, I don't think I could ever get into that series, which is kind of funny because I really enjoy her Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I, yeah, I've got some issues to work out. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and I guess I answered all the other questions you asked because they pertain to unpopular opinions like books I hated that everyone else seemed to enjoy and vice versa. So go me. Head of the game. Latin Lecter would like to know, how often do I feel the urge to adopt all of the dogs I photograph? For those of you who don't know, I go to the shelter twice a week and I photograph the dogs so that they have very stylish pictures for the website so they can get adopted quicker. I would have to say I have gotten really good in recent years about checking myself. I now know there's a certain kind of dog personality that I would like and I do have both Nyssa and Fia so that limits my choices as well but it's probably maybe once every two weeks where there is either a, a adorable puppy or there's just this sweet pit bull or this sweet great dane that just uh, ha! I don't want to say no to but I have to. Uh. Iridescent Reading Garden would like to know what my first book I have a clear memory of reading is. And I'm going to go back to the Pony Pal series. They are the books that I always remember sitting down and reading and enjoying and really getting into and starting off my and girliness about different things. I do have memories of my parents reading me a lot of children's stories like Green Eggs and Ham, uh, Red Fish, Blue Fish, One Fish, Two Fish kind of deal, but I don't consider myself reading those. I have stated in the past that I was illiterate until second, third grade. I just had the hardest time reading. Nothing really connected for me. I still have a hard time spelling because of it. Sounding out words doesn't work for me. My brain, for whatever reason, doesn't work that way. And so I wasn't reading a lot until some very wonderful people noticed I was struggling and I got into a reading program and things kind of kicked off from there. So that's why Pony Pals is the main series that I remember ever really picking up and really enjoying. See the sun is starting to come in? Oh, oh, go away sun, go away. JBE Chap would like to know what my favorite book in each drama is. Fantasy, sci-fi, fiction, mystery, thriller, romance, etc. Okay, that is a lot and I read a lot, so picking books is always hard for me. I have a stack of five books that I'm really gonna quickly show. It doesn't cover all genres, but these are the books that I decided I needed to tout. So of course, Daughter of the Forest, won't go into that. I really do like Brandon Sanderson's Miss Bourne series. Really, 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 really like it. Gail Carriger is one of my favorite authors at this point, and the Solace series is absolutely adorable. I'm on book two right now and highly, highly enjoying it. There is Horror Store, which is great fun. Ah, Gadry Hendricks. He's just, just the formatting of his book, the horror in this book. 
I like it. I like it. And then, of course, there is Wool by Hugh Howie. Hugh Howie. I, I don't even, I don't even know. He's now one of the greatest sci-fi writers in my brain. This one right here. So those are just a few of my, you know, favorites. Firmus Reads asks, I see you dyed your hair green. Uh, love it, by the way. Thank you. I have a wonderful stylist. What is the craziest hairstyle that I have wanted to have, but haven't due to the maintenance upkeep commitment? I don't overly think about my hair. I usually just go to my stylist and I'm like, do something crazy. I don't care. It's my head. Plus, she's a friend of mine, so I let her experiment with my head. Uh, I've had really, really short hair. I've had really, really long hair. I have had all the colors of the rainbow. I don't know. Half the time, you know, just trying to maintain color is a fun experience. And finally, A World of Books wants to know what I am most excited about reading this year. And that would have to be Heartless by Melissa Meyer. I know a lot of people are really excited about reading it. I have just been going crazy about that book since I heard it existed, but that is the one I am most anticipating at this point. So I hope I answered your guys' questions in a fashion that you guys are okay with. Also hopes to you that you are okay with my halo right now. I am an angel, but I don't want to blind you guys. I will now have a list of all you wonderful people who contributed comments to this little mini quest of mine, and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.